I want to take a, just a quick minute to introduce our, our first of our Ag Emerge Talk speakers, uh, Dr. James White. He's from Rutgers University. I uh, get a chance to read a lot of uh, research papers in, uh, in the industry, and I ran across his, his paper, and it just blew my mind. So I'm really looking forward to you hearing from uh, uh, Dr. White and what he's discovered and uh, as he kicks off our first of our Ag Emerge talks. Dr. James White. Thank you, Monty. I'm very happy to be here and to talk about this research uh, to you. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, something that we've termed the rhizophagy cycle. And this is a process uh, whereby plants can extract nutrients from soil microbes. And so uh, these involve, these microbes actually are endophytes. Okay? And endophytes are microbes that enter into the tissues of plants. They can go into the shoots of plants, into the uh, leaves, they go through the seeds in many cases, they go into the roots. And so what we've been looking for uh, is how these endophytes might be affecting plants. And they can be fungi, like the image I showed before, or they can be bacteria. And uh, this actually, these are, this is a root hair of a plant. And uh, you can see these recently divided pairs of bacteria actually inside those root hairs in the root cell. But they're they're inside the cell, but they're not inside the cell because they are outside the plasma membrane, but inside the cell wall. So they're in what we call the periplasmic space. Endophytes are everywhere. All plants have endophytes. In fact, they have multiple endophytes. They have fungi and they have multiple species of bacteria. Okay, so there's a small community inside plants. And they have major effects on the plants. Okay, for example, uh, and what I'll be talking uh, most about is the nutrition absorption function of endophytes, but they, they also will modulate development of the plant. Okay, the plants don't grow right without these microbes inside them. Uh, they will improve the stress tolerance of plants. When the endophytes are there, plants or have more uh, tolerance to oxidative stresses. Uh, that's abiotic and biotic stress. Uh, and they will suppress plant pathogens. Okay, these endophytes, when they're we're on a seed, for example, they'll seed germinates, they'll go out into the soil, they'll colonize the pathogens, and they will reduce the growth and the virulence of those pathogens. So there are all these beneficial effects that these microbes are having uh, for plants. Plants have evolved to have these microbes with them. Okay, and uh, finally, they will suppress competitor plant growth. Okay, so this is something we're actively exploring now, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention a little bit, bit about it at the end of this presentation. In 2010, some investigators in Australia discovered that microbes, yeasts, and bacteria were entering into plant roots. And uh, they, did, they actually labeled the microbes with green, green fluorescent protein so they could track them inside the plant. And they took these images and they showed that these microbes went inside the plant cells. And they envisioned this as a root eating process, that the roots were actually consuming these microbes. And so they denominated this rhizophagy, root, root phagy for eating, rhizophagy. Uh, so uh, they published an article titled, Turning the Table, Plants Consume Microbes as a Source of Nutrients. Well, we've been examining uh, that phenomenon for a few years now, several years, and uh, in order to visualize these microbes in the plant, we developed a, a new staining procedure. And uh, basically, it's a reactive oxygen staining technique. Uh, we use a, a spe special chemical, DAB, but it will stain brown wherever reactive oxygen is present. And so you can see this 
seedlings in agaros, in agar here, and that brown, this has been stained, the brown is where reactive oxygen is present. So what happens is when these microbes are in the plant, the plant reacts by secreting reactive oxygen onto them. And so we're able to see these microbes, whereas before these microbes were almost invisible. Now we can actually visualize them with this technique. So that's what we've been doing. And what we have found is that uh, these microbes actually, they alternate between uh, being endophytes in the plant and going out into the soil. So they will alternate from soil to enter the plant actually at the, at the meristem, root meristem tip. They go inside the cells at the meristem where the walls are soft. And uh, they actually will convert to protoplast phases. They lose their cell walls. They form protoplasts. And eventually they will trigger root hair formation. Okay, without the microbes, we get no root hair formation. The microbes are necessary to start that process. Then, as the root hairs elongate, the microbes are ejected out of the tips of these root hairs. And they go back into the soil, reform their cell walls, go out, gather nutrients in the soil. Then they're attracted back again to the meristem. This is the root exudate zone. And enter the tissue again. So this cycle continues. This image shows uh, bacteria uh, as they enter root cells. They're just inside the root cells there. Okay, this image shows uh, fluorescent microscopy, shows the bacteria exiting the root hair tip. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, Phragmites, an uh, invasive reed grass, one of the plants we work on. And uh, you can see the exudate zone here, this cloud of microbes all these blue dots. And then this zone here, right around that, that is the meristem where the bacteria, in this case, are entering those plant cells. Exactly what triggers them to enter, we don't know. There's a couple of hypotheses out there. I won't go into the details of that. Uh, but they go inside there. Once inside, the bacteria will shed their cell walls and they uh, form these protoplasts. And these protoplasts actually don't function like regular cells. These protoplasts will divide kind of like yeasts, but by blebbing, they'll just bleb out. Normally, bacteria with cell walls will have to form. They'll, they'll do binary fission. They divide, and they make a cell wall. Uh, and so it's a very slow process with normal bacterial division. But without cell walls, they just bleb out into smaller and smaller sizes. And so this uh, internal, this actually shows some of these L forms. Actually, this is uh, in culture. And you can see they just bud like that sequentially. So uh, in this phase, the plant essentially can replicate very rapidly these microbes. And so this actually is one of the things that happens is uh, these microbes are replicated inside the plant cell. But at the same time, reactive oxygen is uh, bombarded onto these microbes. And uh, this, these actually show, this is a parenchyma cell. You can see these little red cells. These are uh, the protoplasts of bacteria. And the red is from the reactive oxygen. And the, the form of reactive oxygen that's used and is highly potent is called superoxide. So superoxide will uh, penetrate into the membrane of the bacteria, will go into the cell, will break down some of the proteins. Uh, and uh, the older uh, protoplasts will actually uh, degrade. And you can see, actually, here's one. You can see this bigger one that's clear than the smaller one that's blue. This is stained for uh, protein using aniline blue. And so the smaller ones have a lot of protein in them. These larger ones don't. Okay, so this reactive oxygen is very effective at extracting nutrients from these microbes, while at the same time propagating them, making them so they have more numbers. So the plant is going to push these microbes out back into the soil, in increasing the numbers of microbes that are carrying nutrients for the 
plant. So we also have found that fungi do the same rhizophagy cycle. They go inside the cells, and this is one of the plants that, uh, this is actually a, some, a little weed called Frolichia, uh, snake cotton, Frolichia gracilis. Uh, but a fungus will go in to the cells uh, in this particular plant. Okay, the fungus is this yeast. Okay, this is uh, called a black yeast. Uh, and uh, okay, these fungi, once they enter into the plant cell, the root cell, they lose cell walls also. They form protoplasts. Okay, and this shows these protoplasts of fungi forming. And these protoplasts, actually, they call these mycosomes, the fungal protoplasts. But it's the same thing. It works exactly the same way as the bacterial. Um, OK, this shows uh, the protoplasts inside Froelichia. And you can see there's chains of them, again, in the periplasmic space outside the membrane. And you can see here, the same plant, you see bacteria down in here. So there are both fungi and bacteria that go into these cells. So it's a mixed community. The rhizophagy mi microbes modulate development of the plant. Okay, and uh, for example, uh, roots don't show the gravitropic response without these microbes being there. No microbes, roots grow on the surface of the soil, or they'll go into the air in some cases. When the microbes are present, roots will grow down into the soil. So the plant is waiting for those microbes to trigger it for soil penetration. Also, root hairs. Roots don't develop root hairs without these microbes in the cells. Okay, if there's no microbes there, you get no root hairs at all. This shows a Bermuda grass seedling. And you can see the tip here and a little bit further on the root here. And there are no, there are no microbes here. There are no hairs here. Okay, in the same experiment with uh, pseudomonads, uh, they go into the tissue and immediately hairs form. Uh, and what, what's happening is, of course, the microbes are going in here, they're triggering hair development, and they're coming out. Function of hairs. We all know hairs on plants, root hairs on plants, are to absorb nutrients. But maybe not. With uh, the rhizophagy cycle, it's clear that these hairs, this is a root hair here, is the vehicle for putting those microbes out into the soil, putting them back into the soil to acquire more nutrients. Now you can see the hairs. This is fluorescent stain. You can see all the bacteria. This is a close-up of a hair of uh, actually Poa annua. Little dots there. Those are the protoplasts in there. And you can see coming out here, these are the protoplasts being extruded from the tip of the hair. So putting those microbes back out into the soil is necessary so that they can then go out, get new nutrients, and then carry those back to the root at the growing tip and re-enter. OK, this shows a hair. This is a, a sedge. And uh, you can see the, this is the hair. These are all the protoplasts inside it, loaded with protoplasts. And uh, these actually are in motion. There's cyclosis that's moving these microbes around. So they're flowing like this inside these hairs. And we have images that I'll show tomorrow of that process. And these are the bacteria being extruded out. Once they're pushed out of the tip of that hair, they reform their cell walls. You can see the rods out there. Okay, This is tomato that shows the uh, bacteria being extruded. And bacteria blue staining here and some bacteria there. How do, what, first of all, what nutrients do microbes get for plants? Uh, nitrogen. We've shown 30% 30, 30 of the nitrogen comes from these microbes. Uh, but we also, there's good evidence that there are minerals, iron, zinc, copper, other minerals, those minerals that plants need. Microbes are very efficient at getting those minerals. They can, first of all, they can swim out there. They can find the mineral. They can latch onto it and then absorb it and then bring it back to the plant. So it makes all the sense in the world that plants would learn how to manage microbes in order to obtain nutrients. OK, and how do they do that? They do that with structures called siderophores. Uh, they will 
Also, simply their cell walls absorb nutrients onto the cell walls. And so when plants take those cell walls, they get those nutrients. And uh, plants use organic acids to kind of release some of those nutrients. And the microbes also will go out and get those immobilized, complexed uh, nutrients like iron, citrate complex, and uh, absorb those. Okay, so first of all, siderophores, they're structures, they're molecules that microbes have, like this is a siderophore, that will actually go out and hook onto, for example, iron. And then this will then mobilize back and hook into the bacteria. So it's a specialized structure for acquiring uh, metals, for example. Okay, this shows that actually the cell walls themselves of a microbe has a net negative charge. These metals have a net positive charge. So the metals will just adhere to those cell walls. And this actually shows silver particles in a, in a cell wall of a bacterium. Plants actively secrete organic acids like, for example, uh, citrate, malate, acetate. They'll secrete those into the soil, these exudates. Those organic acids will then complex onto these metals, like iron, form a complex all over them. Microbes have special uh, organic acid metal uh, transporters in their walls and their membranes. And so these microbes can get these complex nutrients, organic acid metal complexes, absorb them in. Okay, so this is a case where the plant is working with the microbes, uh, secreting all these organic acids out there to immobilize the nutrients, sending those microbes out to then gather those nutrients for the plant and bring them back. So we have also discovered that uh, we can use these rhizophagy microbes to stimulate uh, development of crop plants, but competitor plants, we can uh, suppress that development. Uh, that is, it'll make some, when some plants grow and other plants they'll suppress. And so we're trying uh, to develop bioherbicides, uh, growth promoters that are also bioherbicides using that. And one example is a tomato endophyte. Uh, we got an endophyte from tomato, it's seed vectored endophyte. It happens to be this, Micrococcus luteus. You see it in the root hair there. It stimulates tomato development, but it inhibits the growth of, uh, for example, in this case, uh, carrot. Here's with carrot without, here's carrot with. You see all the little white areas around there, all these white zones. Okay, those are the microbes around the, around the seedling. Okay, and this is Japanese knotweed. Okay, this is without the microbe, this is with the microbe. And you see it suppressed Japanese knot, knotweed completely. Okay, so um, just to summarize very quickly here, uh, these endophytes uh, and this rhizophagy cycle uh, has some ramifications for agriculture. And one of the ramifications that uh, is like no-till is better because you don't disturb that microbial community. Organics in the soil is better. Because these are seed transmitted, you don't want to have sterilized seeds. You don't want to have spe special seed treatments that remove the microbes and put something else on it. Okay, so you want to preserve those microbes. And finally, in the future, based on the work that a lot of people are doing, uh, we might be able to use microbes to manage crops without agrochemicals. So that's it. Thank you very much.